Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with Jack and Peggy Joyce Ruth. What happens when instantly you're normal and then you become psychotic? You become a basket case, you become a vegetable, and doctors offer no hope. This just happens in the movies. It's not supposed to happen in real life, but it happened, and it happened to my guests that are here. But before I let you hear their story, I want you to know that this telecast is different than any other telecast you've ever seen. Why is it different? Because you're not going to just sit back and relax and be entertained. You're not going to be just a spectator. I tell you, the supernatural is going to invade you sometime during this telecast. You'll see what I mean. Peggy Joyce, from what I understand, your husband's a successful businessman. Uh, you've got everything going for you, and you decide to talk to a neighbor of yours that is Buddhist. What happened? Yes. Well, I'd been a, reared in a Christian home, and uh, we'd gone to church. It was a Baptist home, and I, I decided that I needed to go and tell her about Jesus because she kept her house real dark, and she burned these incense, and uh, I didn't know anything about spiritual warfare. And so I went to her house and knocked, and I was, I was frightened. I really wasn't doing it necessarily because God sent me. I, I just felt like I didn't mm -hmm. want her to go to hell. And uh, when I got in, she said, I want you to keep an open mind. And she said, I'll listen to you if you'll listen to me. Well, I thought that sounded like a fair exchange. Sure. And she started talking. I don't remember anything she even said. But I just know that all of a sudden, I felt like I was choking. My, uh, my mind just started blitzing and I, I couldn't think where I was. I, I, all of a sudden, I was so confused that I didn't know. Uh, I, all I could think about is, I've just got to get out of this place. And as soon as I got out, I started walking and all of these unbelievable thoughts started going through my mind. You know, what if there's not a God? You know, what if Jesus is not the right one? And, and I just, I literally went crazy. In, in that this structure. isn't supposed to happen in real life. Uh, Jack, when did you first aware that, were aware that something was going wrong with your wife? I really wasn't aware of it. I was a workaholic, and so I spent 14 hours a day at work. And uh, the lady at the uh, library called me and said, your wife has serious problems, I think. You know, and so that's when I realized that she'd been going down there every day studying the various kinds of religions. Well, why were you studying this, Peggy? Well, I wasn't, I wasn't really trying to find one that I wanted. I was trying to disprove all these other mm -hmm. religions in the hope of proving to myself that uh, Jesus was the right way. And of course, I was just getting deeper and deeper into this uh, horrible fear and panic attacks and, and depression. And it finally came to the place where I, I couldn't even stay by myself. So uh, when Jack found out about this, he refused to let me go to the library and he started uh, taking yeah, So you, you must have thought it was somehow the library was causing it. <laughs> yeah, Jack's I thought she bizarre. got too intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> getting into my head. Uh, but I would, I would still, uh, encyclopedias out of my mother's house and take them home so I could continue in this search. Because this, this was compulsive. Oh, I was just obsessed, you yeah. know. And I, I got to the point where I couldn't think. I, I would cry all the time. Uh, I would asleep. I would go to sleep to try to escape. And I have never been as tormented. I, I can't even describe the torment that I went through. And I, I came to the place where I just said, you know, this isn't worth living. I would never have tried to take my life because I was too afraid to do mm -hmm. that. But I knew that I had to have some help. Well, Jack, did you arrange for her to get help? Yes, sir, I did. Uh, of course, it was part of survival on my part. I was a backward multimillionaire. And so I had a lot of pressure on the company and then uh, had this at home. She'd wake up at 2.30 in the morning and just scream out, is there a God, you know? And I don't know if you've ever had someone scream in the middle of the night, it takes your breath, you know. And it also made me think, is there a God, you know? And she said, well, tell me, how, how do you know there's a God, you know? And it moved me as well as it moved her. Uh, but interesting enough, um, I started searching for a uh, reputable uh, psychiatrist. And I found the one that cost so much, uh, you know, going in the poorhouse rapidly. But I'd, I would keep pushing him. I'd say, you know, I don't care how much it costs, just get her well. Sure. And, and he'd say, well, 
uh, you know, after I nailed him pretty hard, he said, I can treat the symptoms, but I cannot treat the cause. And that threw me. Um, so you, you, all of a sudden, you became hopeless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, uh, now, you had shock treatment. Did that help? I, well, he, he put me through a long uh, period of, of just doing the testing and the talking with me. And when that didn't work, well, then he went to the shock treatments. And I had months of shock treatments. And of course, I was on a lot of drugs. That's every other day. Yes, we'd go every other day. And uh, uh, that, uh, you know, they say that that kills brain cells. It's, it it uh, stops your short term memory. And um, uh, I was still miserable. Mm -hmm. I couldn't remember what the problem was, but I knew there was something back there that was so uh, desperately wrong that I would have to go to this measure to, uh, to get well. And then, of course, my memory started coming back. And when that started happening, then yes. I was in desperate shape again. And we'd again. have to take her back again. So. Okay, how long did this go on? How many years? Uh, this went on for eight years. Now, you must have totally given up. Uh, she'd have her good days occasionally, you know, and... So why didn't you just um, do what a lot of people do, divorce your wife? Well, um, the thing is, if I'd been sick, she had taken care of me. And she and I had a phenomenal marriage. I mean, it was excellent. It started off good. We never got an argument. You never saw anything like her behavior oh, no, before? Oh, no, 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 She was it. I mean, she was popular in high school. She had all sorts of honors in school. She just did everything perfect, you know. But, uh, this thing's all collapsed on me at all at once. And, uh, all that money and it didn't help you one oh, bit? No. Mm -hmm. you no, no, he was a backward millionaire. Was, that means he didn't have any money. Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> I missed that part. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'll I'm, tell you what, <laughs> she cried out in a desperate prayer and supernaturally she was helped. Yeah. Don't go away, we'll be right back after this word. Read Peggy Joyce Ruth's book, Psalm 91, which includes 30 testimonies, and you will start walking in God's supernatural shield of protection. Del Hicks miraculously survived a plane crash, 40 hours in the cold Atlantic waters, avoiding a killer shark and death by hypothermia. In her book, she includes a special Psalm 91 covenant prayer that will unfold God's promises in your life, including access into the secret place of the Most High, divine protection from deadly diseases, supernatural provision and peace, and angelic protection, and so much more. Don't miss out on getting both Peggy's powerful and timely book, Psalm 91, and this exclusive print of the Psalm 91 Prayer of Protection, displaying a personalized version of the prayer which you can pray every day. Yours for a donation of $19. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9688. Call or send your check to the address on the screen. Please specify offer number 9688 or log on to sidroth.org. Call or write today. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Jack and Peggy Joyce Ruth. And what happened to Peggy Joyce should happen to no one. I mean, they were a wonderful, happy couple. And instantly she got exposed to what she calls spiritual warfare, which she wasn't prepared for. And she became insane. How many years? Eight years. Eight years. And in desperation, after eight years, Jack, you had given up. You had spent any, you spent the money, the shock treatment, the psychiatry, no hope. What did you cry out in a desperate way? One night, I went out to the clothesline, and I was so desperate, and I, I just said, God, I don't even know if you exist. You may not even be there, but if you're there, find me and bring me back. I've tried everything. I've gone to the library. I've gone through shock treatments. I had gone to pastors before I did that and they didn't have any answers for me. And I said, find me and bring me back. And I didn't realize that God started answering that prayer. Now I could look back in retrospect and see how he did. But the very next week, uh, things absolutely started changing my life. And it was God. He moved on the scene when I asked him. But see, I quit searching with my mind and I started searching with my heart. That's a key distinction. Uh, Jack, I understand for a couple of years, you had your old wife back. Yes. Mm -hmm. But then what happened, Peggy Joyce? Well, first of all, uh, we, uh, the way God started working is Jack had to go to New Orleans. And so I went with him. And on the way, we stopped, and this couple told us about this baptism of love. 
and they said where where you just fall in love with the Lord and you just experience his love in just a new and and wonderful way and I remember thinking could this work for me and we left there we went to Conroe and uh, my cousin had remarried I met his wife for the first time I was in her house for maybe five minutes she told me the same thing about this wonderful experience with the Lord and I thought I can't believe I'm hearing the same thing you know, two times mm -hmm. in the same day. We went to New Orleans, got there and found a logo bookstore. I had no idea what logo meant, <laughs> you know, that it meant the Word of God. We, I got a book, Pat Boone's, a new song, and he was telling the same thing, the same experience. And before that week was over, I had cried out again and said, God, if this is real, I, I, I've heard it three times now, if this is real, I want that. And the Lord just all of a sudden, this heavenly, uh, prayer language just came flowing out and and it, it was the most wonderful thing. Peace just came all over me. Jack received it the same. It was heaven on earth for a while. <laughs> it was. Two years. It, and, and God just did a healing yeah, in well, our you marriage. Know, well, you know what's going on right now? The same peace they're talking about is coming right through your television set or your video right now. It's that same peace. But what happened after two years? After two years, those old thoughts started coming back. Those old feelings came back. And then I was really desperate. And I said, God, you know, <laughs> uh, for two years, I've had this wonderful, intimate time with the Lord and with my husband. What on earth is happening? And as it continued to get worse, one day God gave me a vision. And I, I didn't know at the time what a vision was, but I saw myself sitting in a chair and it was like a, a, a man dressed in white told me to open my mouth and I could see a black tooth and my, my body became transparent and I could see the roots going down through my body. And then he pulled the tooth out and then he spent a long time packing that area. And I thought it had happened. I thought then that meant everything was okay. And the next day, the bottom fell out again and I, and, and I forgot the vision, I forgot the two years of peace, I forgot everything. I, I was desperately going through the medicine cabinet just trying mm. to find maybe an old bottle of pills from two years before and because I was desperate. And um, uh, so I started looking in, in the Bible and I saw the scripture that said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered. I didn't know what deliverance was. I didn't know what it meant. But I said, God, whatever this means, I'm calling on you and I'm going to be delivered. And I kept saying that over and over and over. And so in the meantime, there were some friends who went to Jack and they told Jack that they thought I had a demon. And they now, thought, Jack, what did you think about your wife having a demon? I had enough problems without hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I took the cassette tape they gave me and I threw it across the table. And I said, I am not going to be a de demon chaser. So why would you change your mind? Well, I didn't. Uh, it just supernaturally got, uh, she'll tell the story. Okay. Because, well, I got worse and I got worse. And I think he got desperate. And so at that point, this same couple came back and they said, we have found a pastor who will pray for her. And so Jack, at this point, he was ready to do anything. <laughs> and so uh, they had us uh, pray and fast for three days. And I remember that I didn't expect anything to happen, but I was so desperate I would have tried anything. And I was so desperate that uh, anything they had told me. But in my heart, there was just that little glimmer of hope that maybe this could do it. And now I know that uh, different deliverances, somebody might have a deliverance that's quite mild. Mine was very, <laughs> very vocal and it was uh, very Jack, dramatic. Jack, did it scare you? <laughs> as far as your sheet of paper. Mm. I, all I could think of is what am I going to tell my mother-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> but bottom line, what happened? Bottom line, I was delivered. I, I, I was set free. When that demonic oppression uh, left, then um, it, it was like I Instant felt- Instant or? It, it, it left instantly, but then the feeling started coming back. And oh no, <laughs> I know. wait a second now, she gets help and then it comes back. She gets help, then it comes back. How much more can she take? She got answers. You want to hear these answers. By the way, God has just healed someone that had a neck pain. If you move your head, pain is gone. And a back is healed too. Don't go away. It's God is so strong. His spirit is just pouring, pouring through your set right now.
Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Jack and Peggy Joyce Ruth. What happened to Peggy Joyce, and Jack for that matter, should not happen to anyone. I mean, just instantly, you lost your mind. And for eight years, she went through this. Then a desperate prayer caused her to have what she calls a baptism, an immersion in God's love, and she was okay for two years. And you had, as you put it, heaven on oh, earth for two years. And then the same old, same old came back. And then she had deliverance. Again, heaven on earth, but only two days. Jack, you must have felt like a roller coaster. I did. I cried in front of my superiors. Um, I was that emotionally unwound. I, I thought I was losing my mind, honestly. And Peggy Joyce, let's go back to that vision you had before the deliverance, which gave you a clue on your final victory. Well, the Lord brought that back to my remembrance. The, uh, the packing period, the, the pulling out of the tooth was a representation of the deliverance. But then the packing period, the Lord showed me I, that that was where my mind would be renewed. And so I said, well, how do I renew my mind? I, did, I didn't know what he meant. And because I was beginning, I didn't hear a voice, but I heard something in my spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and the Lord showed me that he was going to give me, and he gave me the words exchange system. And he, and he said, what, what I would do every time one of those feelings or one of those thoughts would come that I was to get a scripture promise and I was to say that scripture promise until it literally drove that fear or that thought out of my mind. Uh, give me an example. Okay, now I was uh, so concerned that maybe Jesus wasn't the right way. And so the Lord said, uh, exchange system. I would hear that in my spirit, exchange mm -hmm. system. And he gave me then uh, Romans 1, 4 where it says God declared Jesus to be the Son of God by resurrecting Him from the dead. And all of a sudden I realized, Lord, if you had wanted Buddha resurrected, if you'd wanted Mohammed resurrected, if you'd wanted anyone else resurrected, you could have done that. But you chose to resurrect Jesus. And so I would say that and it would bring all the peace back and it would drive that fear away. Now you said you would say that. Could you just think it and it would be just as good? The Lord showed me that it didn't work when I thought it that I had to say it. Now, I don't know why, but there's something about that. There's a power in the confessed word. How many years now has it been since you've used this exchange and not had your symptoms? Uh, it's probably been about 30 years now. 30 years? Did you hear that? This exchange system sounds better than the ones they have with food. Uh, this is a different type of food. Uh, you know, Peggy Joyce, I personally have experienced what you're telling me, and I've experienced with one of your favorite scriptures, the 91st Psalm. Yes. And I have found, and I really believe this, I know you two believe this, that when someone takes the 91st Psalm, but what I do in, is I personalize it. I change it a little bit, exactly. I take a little liberty, and I make it for me. Yes. And I say it out loud, it doesn't work if I don't say it out loud. Exactly. I say it out loud, and I literally, I, I literally can feel the atmosphere changing. Can you two feel Definitely. that? Exactly. Uh, see, I was also afraid of disease back in, mm -hmm. and that's when the Lord gave me the 91st Psalm. And, and th that was the, the psalm that I used to exchange for the thought of the fear of, of cancer or the fear of heart disease or the fear of, uh, of something else. That it was that 91st psalm. commercial would come up and say, at one hour four is going to have cancer, is it you? Please give mm -hmm. the American Cancer Society. And she would say, how do, how do we know? You know and, and, and then she'd start, uh, I'd say, well, God's Word says, and then she'd go and repeat this. And it was so much re repetition. I mean, she did it a hundred times and we'd be in public place, she'd get up and go to the restroom and, and quote it in there she could until she got her peace and then she'd come back in and be perfect. Now Peggy Joyce, if you had not had the deliverance, if you had not had the what you call the exchange system, do you think you'd be seated right here now? I believe that it takes both. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, because I had deliverance and then I had the renewal of the mind. But I also realized that God gave me that vision and he showed me the pulling out of the tooth. And then he showed me the packing period. So a lot of people have the deliverance without the packing, yes. or they have the packing, as you call mm -hmm. it, without the deliverance. You really need both, don't you? You have to have Definitely. both. 
Uh, why is it most people don't understand this? It's so simple. It's so in the scriptures. But I tell you what happens. They maybe get deliverance, and then when they start having those old feelings again, they give up and they throw in the towel and they quit and they don't realize they're going to have to keep in there and God will take them step by step and show them what to do. That's why I wrote the book is because the Lord showed me that so many people stop short and they don't go on to have their mind renewed, just like it says in Romans 12, 1 uh, and, and 2, that, that our mind has to be renewed. And I, and I know something. I know something about you. I know that you could experience more peace right now I'm going to ask Peggy Joyce to speak the 91st Psalm into you, right into you right now. Would you look in the camera, Peggy Joyce, and speak that to them? He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Father, I thank you that you are my Lord and my God and my source. You're the one that delivers me from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. And Father, I thank you that you're the one that picks me up and, and, and takes me out of any evil that can come. Every evil known to man is going to fall under one of four categories. And Father, you've shown us in, in the 91st Psalm, verses 5 and 6, that there are four categories of evil. And you've promised that you would deliver us out of them all. And even though a thousand fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, you said that it would not approach me and it would not come near my household. Father, you told me that you would give your angels charge over me to bear me up in their hands. You've also told me, Lord, that you've given me authority over all the powers of the enemy and they'd not be able to hurt me. And then you've told me, Lord, that if I loved you, you'd give me seven more promises. And Father, I thank you that in verses four through, uh, 14 through 16 that you've given seven more promises that when I call on you, you're going to hear me, you're going to deliver me, you're going to honor me. You've promised, Lord, that when I'm in trouble and I cry out to you, that you're going to rescue me. You've promised, Lord, that you're going to satisfy me with a long life and you're going to allow me to behold your salvation. Father, I thank you that no matter what comes my way, You've promised me, Lord, that you are going to be there to take care of anything that would come. I know there's a lot of promises, Lord, in the Word of protection, but they're all combined in this one psalm. And Lord, how good you are that you gave it to me and you've given me the opportunity to share it with others. Peggy Joyce and Jack, what you are teaching is going to change the lives. Did you catch the end of that 91st psalm? With long life, Amen. I will satisfy you. There are many people that have long life, but they're not very satisfied. There are people with short life that aren't satisfied. But this promise is, it's for Peggy Joyce, but it's really for whoever reads this word. With long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. King David said, I behold the door, Lord always before me. Whether you behold him or not, Yeshua, Jesus, is always before you. You're important. You're special. Jesus died for you and rose from the dead so you can repent of your sins and be free. Read Peggy Joyce Ruth's book, Psalm 91, which includes 30 testimonies, and you will start walking in God's supernatural shield of protection. Del Hicks miraculously survived a plane crash, 40 hours in the cold Atlantic waters, avoiding a killer shark and death by hypothermia. In her book, she includes a special Psalm 91 covenant prayer that will unfold God's promises in your life, including access into the secret place of the Most High, divine protection from deadly diseases, supernatural provision and peace, and angelic protection, and so much more. Don't miss out on getting both Peggy's powerful and timely book, Psalm 91, and this exclusive print of the Psalm 91 Prayer of Protection, displaying a personalized version of the prayer which you can pray every day. Yours for a donation of $19. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9688. Call or send your check to the address on the screen. Please specify offer number 9688 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.